Question number five, Eugenie Sage. Mr Speaker, thank you. My question is to the Minister for the Environment. Does he propose to implement the Environment Canterbury model in other regional and unitary councils by replacing nearly half the elected councillors with ministerial appointees? Honourable Louise Upston. Uh, speaking on behalf of the Minister for the Environment, no. In 2010, Environment Canterbury was a dysfunctional council which had failed in 19 years to get a regional water plan in place despite being responsible for two-thirds of the land for irrigation in New Zealand. Canterbury had faced some special challenges and the member will be pleased to know that the Associate Minister of Local Government and I have carefully considered a range of options that respond to these issues. These will also provide for ECAN's future governance arrangements after October 2016. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Given that the Minister said that a fully elected regional council in Canterbury carries too many risks, does he propose to implement the Environment Canterbury model in other risky democratic institutions, central government perhaps? <laughs> Mr Speaker. Honourable Louise Upston. No, the considerations that have been uh, that are in the proposal for ECAN consider the important balances of issues like strong leadership, sustainable development of economic growth and jobs, strong environmental stewardship, especially for fresh water management, and accountability and value, mo value for money for Canterbury ratepayers. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Why has the Minister reneged on a promise he made in 2010 to the people of Canterbury that by 2013, and I quote, Environment Canterbury will be ready to return to an elected council status? Honourable Louise Upston. The proposal that is out for um, consultation with the public, Mr Speaker, is a sensible step for ECAN. It's really important that we maintain the progress that the Environment uh, Canterbury Commissioners have achieved in the important areas including freshwater management and the very important earthquake recovery. And it provides important elected community representation, balancing the skills and expertise required, but also giving Canterbury a voice. <laughs> Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Why have the people of Kaipara been promised a fully elected council this year Three years after governance by elected, uh, sorry, if I say it again, why have the people of Kaipara been promised a fully elected council this year after three years' governance by commissioners when Cantabrians still don't have order, a fully order, elected order, council? Order. I have a point of order from the Honourable Jerry Speaker, Brown. Speaker, quite, quite apart from the length of that question, uh, the question on the primary seat relates to environment Canterbury, not Kaipara. I'll hear from Eugenie Sage. Uh, the question compares the situation in Kaipara with that in Canterbury. Order, 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 no, I don't need it. Listen, I think strictly the Honourable Jerry Brownlee is right, but the member in, in uh, supplementaries then asked about whether the model in Canterbury could be replicated elsewhere. Uh, and the minister has answered that. I think on this case I'm going to allow the minister, the member, to re-ask the question. I think the minister will be quite capable of answering it. Eugenie Mr. Speaker, why have the people of Kaipara been promised a fully elected council this year after three years governance by commissioners when Cantabrians still don't know when a fully democratic council will be returned to them five years after National removed it? Speaker. Honourable Louise Upston. Um, I'm answering on behalf of the Minister for the Environment, um, who has responsibility jointly with the Associate Minister for Local Government um, for Environment Canterbury. If you have further questions, I suggest you put those to the Minister for Local Government. Uh, supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. When he said yesterday that a fully elected regional council carried too many risks, did he forget that it was elected councillors who developed the Canterbury Water Management Strategy and that it is elected councillors in Christchurch, Selwyn and Waimakariri who are leading earthquake recovery in their communities? Mr Speaker. Honourable Louise Upston. Um, the issues that led to the government needing to intervene in Environment Canterbury in 2010 are clearly documented, Mr Speaker. I don't intend to go over those again. Um, the extension was put in place in 2012 because of the uh, fragile requirements around the Canterbury rebuild. Mr Speaker, the issues and complexities associated with freshwater management uh, are not a short-term issue for Canterbury. Uh, and that's why it's important in this balance model that's proposed and is out for public consultation that a mixed model is suggested. 
Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. What is the risk for the Minister in committing to a date on which democracy and a fully elected regional council will be restored in Canterbury? Uh, Honourable Mr. Louise Speaker. Upson. Uh, this proposal that is out for public consultation is a requirement from the 2012 Act um, for the Environment Canterbury uh, Commissioners and the suggested model that is out for public consultation has a mixed model that includes elected representatives from the community in Canterbury but also the very important balance of skills and expertise to navigate the very complex and long-term issues that the people of Canterbury face. Supplementary question, Eugenie Sage. Doesn't the fact that the Minister won't commit to the restoration of democracy and a fully elected council show that the government's hand-picked commissioners have failed to progress the issues they were supposed to in the last five years? Honourable Louise Upston. Mr Speaker, uh, I think the fact that Environment Canterbury and the, uh, its time under the commissioners have achieved significantly if you look at the one example of the processing of resource consents, over 70% of them were outside the statutory time frames. That's now down to about 5%. Shows the high performance that has been brought to the people of Canterbury while the commissioners have been in place. We recognise the importance of the community's voice and that's why a mixed model is proposed and I welcome the members of the public and their submissions which close on the 1st of May. Supplementary question, Dr Megan Woods. Thank you. Which specific aspects of democracy do, does he find too risky? Good question. Honourable Louise Upston, on behalf Mr. of the Speaker, Minister. I think I have answered this quite fully in the challenges that the people of Canterbury face. Uh, the fact that we want to move away from the commissioners that we have in place now, to give Canterbury a say in their regional council, but the importance of actually making sure that these very complex issues are addressed and that the people of Canterbury have confidence in the strong relationships that are currently in place with the mayors across the district, across the 10 districts in Canterbury, and this is why a mixed model is proposed. Question. Point of order, Dr. My, Megan my question was very directed. Order, order, ask order. For specifics. If the member's going to raise an issue about whether it's been addressed, invite the member to have a look at the answer. There's no doubt in my mind. Thank you. Order. Question number six. Jackie.